vintage theme. Hello, <laughs> Adele and Lou. Where have you been? It's <laughs> Wednesday. <laughs> a dog's age ago from the last time you made a podcast. <laughs> I thought maybe you'd you'd given up, Lou. <laughs> oh, and you're back. You're back from the big tour. <laughs> well. I've got a treat. I've got a treat for both of you guys. Both of y'all. <laughs> ah, Lou, I know how you love your Instagram. You follow those Instagrams with the people who teach you how to talk. <laughs> well, I got a special guy lined up here. <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh. His name is Franklin Hunter. <laughs> Perhaps he's familiar to you. He's a lot. He's what you like. Take it away, Franklin. Franklin. Hey, thanks for a track, man. I am Franklin Hunter, and I'm an attorney and communication expert from the great and complicated state of Texas. It's my pleasure to be the guest MC for this episode of my favorite freeform podcast, Raw Impressions. Thanks, Lou and Adele, for having me. It's an honor, for sure. I'll be back soon with some examples of how to effectively communicate with your coworkers, friends, and loved ones. Never heard of Franklin Hunter before. <laughs> I like that name. Yeah. Hmm. It's similar to someone I follow on Instagram. Oh, is it? Yeah. Yeah. It's a little similar. Uh -huh. so. <laughs> what's, the, what's the advice? What's this person's um, angle, Franklin Hunter? I have a feeling he's just going to interject at some point during the episode. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Pop in here and there. I mean, if the previous episodes and the other... I'm going to say bogus guests that Fortrack... Hey, Fortrack Man is back. Right oh. off the top. There he is. Yeah. I kind of didn't expect him to come back. Did y'all miss him? Um, He was missed. He was missed. Yeah. I guess I missed him. Uh, I missed you. I'm so glad you're home. Holy uh, cow. I was so gone for wow. so long. We realized it was really long. And then the last... Uh, no? Cookies or pretzels? <laughs> Pretzels. You you came to California and you took me home. I did. I came you, and picked you up. You did. <laughs> oh. Oh, that's, oh. Yeah, you flew out. You flew out to, to California. I had a little bit of a whirlwind, yeah. Yeah. And um, you went to two shows. Mm hmm We had one day off in Los Angeles. <laughs> What are those, Adele? Can you... Is that the ice? Yeah. <laughs> I think yeah. Uh, we determined that one of Adele's... Maybe the only thing that you like about um, plane flights mm. is those sounds. You like the sound of the ice. Mm -hmm. And then you like the sound of a can being opened. Oh, I love the sound of the can cracking open on an airplane. Why is that different on an airplane? I don't know. Well, there's a lot of reasons. I'm sure it has everything to do with the air, air pressure, pressure, among right? other things. But it has such a satisfying snap. It's like it just really has the cutest snap. Whenever someone cracks open a can, and it's always the, you know, the, the hmm, flight attendant. Is that what they're called now? Flight attendant. I think that's a really good good phrase. Thank you. Yeah, flight attendant. Um, when the flight attendant is cracking open that can of whatever it is, you know, ginger ale, soda, whatnot, beer, it's so satisfying. I love that sound. And the, my second favorite sound is when they scoop the ice and put it in a cup. And you like being asked whether you want pretzels or cookies. I do. I don't know. I don't know if I like being asked that. Okay. I mean, well, it's fine. It's something that happens on it, a plane. It happens, yeah. Now, <clears throat> I'm someone who has been fully beaten down by air travel, so I just, I just go completely. I just give up. I get on a <laughs> plane. I don't complain. I'm just like, whatever, bring it on. But most people who don't travel quite as much, mm -hmm. or maybe they um, <clears throat> have a lot of opinions about traveling. So I was really, I, I, they don't look forward to traveling. 
So mm-hmm. I was really, really excited when you pointed out things that you liked about traveling on a plane. Mm. Something that had nothing to do with the leg room. Something that had nothing to do with being, <laughs> you know, always in the back of the plane. <laughs> yep. Back. Yeah, we were back there. Hanging out right near the back. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. You know, so it was, you, Adele told me that she liked those sounds. I do like those sounds. Yeah. Do you have any sounds on the airplane you like? I like, um, I don't know. I like, I like the rumble. I like the, I like, I like the sound of the engines, Hmm. you know, you know, it's another sound. I I do like, like I do like the cart sounds. Yeah. I like the sound of the toilet. I was going to say, I actually really like the sound of when you put the lid down, because you guys, you put the lid down after you use the potty on the plane, and then you press the flush button, and the the suction, the sound of it, like pulling everything down, it always makes me go like, that's right, just get rid of it, let's just, I I didn't know, I didn't capture that. Yeah, but that's a great sound. I probably could sound. You're going to be flying again real soon. I could find the sound (laughs) easily. Yeah. And I'm going to, yes, once again, be reacquainted with the sound. Yeah. So, yeah, I I like those things. The things that, there are things that I'm not crazy about, obviously. But, you know, I I did mention things that I I liked. So, yeah. So, um, we we flew from Palm Springs. Mm -hmm. The last show was in Palm Desert. Yes. The last Weezer show. Yep. Weezer, Flaming Lips, Dinosaur Jr. show. Yep. Was in Palm Springs. Oh, excuse me, in Palm Palm Desert. Desert. It was in Palm Desert. There's a difference. Yeah. I have, I know people who were, you know, pretty much, they are from Palm Desert. Mo. She was born and raised there. Mo. Yeah. Mo Crover. Yeah. Ahmad Wasif. Uh Uh-huh. I know. Um, I wonder if uh, Josh Homme was also from Palm Desert. He probably went to the same high school as as Ahmad. Maybe he's Ahmad from Palm Desert he, then. Yeah, let's just say he's from Palm Desert. I don't have my phone on me to fact check it, but one of those, I'll one just of say it right now. Josh Homme's from Palm Desert. Say it. <laughs> Go ahead and say it. And his buddy from uh, Eagles of Death Metal mm. was apparently a young Republican when he was in high school. I don't think I know that band, but that's not familiar to me. E- Eagles of Death Metal? Eagles of Death Metal. Hmm. I kind of have a little bit of a soft spot for them, even though... Mm. They are of quit, you know, there's... Mm. Sounds complicated. They were actually playing during that horrible, horrible Bataclan shooting in Paris. Oh, God. So, oh, moving oh, on. Okay, moving okay, on. right. Well, I, yeah. And I saw that lead guy, actually. I saw him in Seven Eleven in Silver Lake once, you know, 15, was he, 15 years what ago. What was the band he was in before? I don't know. He, he's like Josh he's Homme's just... best friend. Oh, okay. And I don't know his name. Huh. Jesse Spacing. Name, nameless guy, lead singer. He wore like aviator glasses. He looked kind of like he was from the 1970s. Did he have a mustache? He totally had a okay. mustache. Okay, yeah, I feel like I've seen video of him. Probably still has a mustache. Mm-hmm. Unless he's become sort of, some sort of Howard Hughes. Hughes character in the wake of his intense life experiences. Um. Yes. Be that as it may. Mm hmm. We so we flew from. That was my first time flying out of the desert, by the way, Palm Desert. I that yeah. that airport, that cute the Palm Springs airport. The Palm, sorry, the Palm Springs airport. Let's keep it keep it straight. Mm-hmm. Um, cute, cute little airport. Um, oh, yeah. Gotta love a small airport. Love that. I I appreciate a cute little airport. Uh, Madison, Wisconsin, also a super cute little airport. Mm-hmm. Um, oh. <laughs> Okay. What to say when someone insults you by calling you a name? Number one, remember that they are masking their own deep insecurities. Mm. They're negatively asserting themselves and in the process, revealing their own insecurities. Instead of saying something like, I'm sorry, could you repeat that? <laughs> say this, I know you are, but what am I? I know you are, but what am I? On the second time, lower your voice by two decibels and wait one second between the last three words of this very effective phrase. (laughs) What am I? And say it again several more times. But what am I? But what am I? (laughs) What am I? But what am I? Feel free to experiment with your tone and use exaggerated facial expressions and physical poses. This will confuse them, if not assert your dominance. 
but definitely make them think twice before ever speaking to you again. Number two, after the insult, make full, unwavering eye contact with your aggressor and say, in a normal, even speaking tone, fuck you. Fuck you. Okay, try that and follow me. He's got great tips. I, those are really, that's quality right there. Dang, life tips. Um, <laughs> <laughs> fuck I'm you. Not, okay. I'm not going to be yeah. following um, huh. Franklin Hunter. You're not. Okay. No, and <laughs> it, it's finally dawning on me what, the, what this is about. I really like this guy named Jefferson Fisher. Okay. Who is a, he's an attorney from Texas. Ah. Oh. And an expert in communication. I like him. Okay. Um, Franklin Hunter? Mm-hmm. I don't know. <laughs> nope. Hit I don't know. I kind of liked it. I kind of <laughs> liked it. I was like, well, maybe I'll, maybe I'll, in 2025, I'll try those approaches. I don't know. So much for Mrs. Nice Guy. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Texas. So we had to connect. Our flight connected. We, we left from Palm Springs and we had to connect. In, in Dallas. In Dallas. The Dallas airport. The Dallas Love Airport. I think it's still called the Love Airport. You know, what's the love part for? I don't know. It's like the Hartford Airport is called Bradley. Like, why do they call it Bradley? I don't know. Huh. Logan Airport. Who's Logan? I don't know. Oh, I don't know either. Yeah. Maybe love was a person, their last name. Sure. Yeah. So I didn't know. I just thought it was a Dallas airport. So it's called the Dallas Love Airport. I thought it was. When I prank phone called it by accident when I was seven years old. <laughs> Which I did. <laughs> you prank called the Dallas airport of all places? Well, we had a phone in our basement. Uh -huh. You know, like a dial phone. I do. You know? So, and um, I was like in the basement, so my mom couldn't see me. Sure. Right? That's it where you in, do that. It was in the, laun the scummy laundry room in the basement of our house in Jackson, Michigan. It was kind of a dirt basement. Raw. It was a raw basement. Mm. So, I picked up the phone there, and then I just dialed a succession of numbers until I got a ringtone, or until it started ringing. Uh-huh. And when I picked up, it said, you have reached the Dallas Love Airport. And I hung up. <laughs> Because that probably, wow. back then, long yeah. distance phone calls cost oh, yeah. hundreds of dollars. You gotten... Boy, I would have been spanked. Yeah, dang. I would have gotten the belt for say, sure. The belt would have come. Dallas Love Airport. <laughs> yeah, so. Oof. So, yeah. so Quick, I don't. Quickly panic, yeah, and hang up. Well, I, I it was my first time, I think, to that airport. And, uh, and you know, we were discussing... Because when you go to the Dallas airport, the Dallas Love Airport, and just like any place in Texas, they, they have their slogan, right? Don't mess with Texas. It's like all over the oh, place. Oh, Texas, the state. Yeah. Oh, you noticed a lot of don't mess with Texas. Yeah, like in the gift shops and See, things like that. Register. I don't even register that stuff anymore. <laughs> well, I noticed, too, they were that was the most uh, sporty-themed airport I'd ever been in. So, like... There was like a whole shop that I think was Cowboys. I guess that's Dallas Cowboys. Oh, yeah. I'm assuming that's football or... Yeah. I, I and the cheerleaders. All I know is the cheerleaders. I don't know what they're cheering for, but... I, I, so it's football. That's great. <laughs> they're cheering for the okay. guys with the silver helmets with a big blue star on the side. Oh, okay. Well... Apparently, if that's even... That's what, the, that's, what their, that's what their helmet looked like in the 1970s, which is the last time that I've actually seen... And then there the was Cowboys like another game. team... Oh, oh don't shit. Don't I, anyway, even. I don't remember, guys. And then the third thing was the don't mess with Texas theme. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> but you and I were like, hmm, maybe we should mess with Texas. I don't know. I'm feeling oh. like messing with Texas a little bit. Well, we're feeling specifically about Terminal A in the airport. Yeah. Because, I mean, I've been to Texas several times in the Texas, last year. Texas, and we're just teasing you, Texas. I'm kind but, of, uh, I am, I am. I enjoy my time in Texas. I mm -hmm. find it interesting. Yeah. There's a lot of great food in Texas. Mm. A lot of space. Yeah. I mean, I don't... I've, it's an, I've it's been an, to Austin an, with you a couple times, yeah. but um, it kind of freaks me out, the state of Texas, you know? I mean... Oh, did you hear that? It's like an airplane going right overhead. Um, but, you know... I, I appreciate that. It's a military aircraft for sure. Yeah. I mean, I appreciate that. How do I articulate this? 
Mm. complexity. Thank you. I mean, it's like, you, you know, appreciate the complexity it's of very, Texas it's, as do yeah, I. It's complex. Just like Wisconsin. You know what I mean? Another complex state. And um, Texas is a, it's a, it's big. Very big. Right. Really I mean, big. I think I'm speaking more of Here's like what's a, not big. You know. What? Here's what's not big. What? The hallways in Terminal A. True. The, it, it's a very claustrophobic terminal. Totally. Look, I've very you know, dated, again, y'all. A lot of y'all. people like to bitch about airports. And, Jen, and I have to say, I don't, I have a lot of good things to say about airports in the last 10 years. There's been a lot of renovations, mm-hmm. a lot of... Uh, We've got our favorites. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of advances and some great, great terminals. Yeah. You know? And really like, you know, and but like, this is like, this Terminal A, I've been there many times. Have you? Yeah. And I, I realized when I came back into it, I'm like, oh, this one hasn't changed yet. Because mm-hmm. so many of them have mm-hmm. changed over the years, and they've they been renovated. They haven't gotten to Terminal A yet. They have not gotten to Terminal no. A in Dallas, and it's a busy it shows. terminal. And oh my god, yeah. And you know, I've never. Um, so we're really messing with Terminal A in and the Dallas in Love particular, Airport, not Texas. Okay, so <laughs> so pretty much when we got on the plane in Palm Springs, you started you started to say that you were hungry, mm. and. You said it throughout the flight. Mm-hmm. You said it as we were walking down the jet bridge. <laughs> so, so are you saying that I was being repetitive? No, not at all. I'm just saying you were you were really hungry and uh. you were letting me know. <laughs> so I and I knew and it was like and it became more like we had like we had to get food. there was a desperation. We had to get food in you immediately. Like okay, right. let's back up. Let's back up. We had a lobby call at three a.m. Okay, 3 a.m. We <laughs> we went to bed. We laid our little no, heads to rest to. at midnight. No, we do because it explains my hunger. Okay. Yeah. Hey, I shared the hunger. I know. And I, I mean, I mean, like I said, I enter an airport and I just, I mean, I, I eat right away when I go to, and I tried, anyway, I was hungry too. You were super hungry. So when we got out of the plane, we had to, we pretty much had to go to the closest place. Three hours place. of sleep. We to, I yeah. So Did, we had to go to the closest place. Desperately, quickly. desperately, and like so we fucking walked into a TGI Fridays. No, it wasn't. It was um, or no, well, it wasn't it was. TGI Friday. It was just called Fridays. Oh, is that different? They took out the TGI part. It just said Fridays. Maybe they thought the God was some sort of thank God. It's Friday was some was bad could be thank goodness it's friday no they could thank goodness it's friday thank goodness so friday yeah we walked it was into just fridays fridays and we sat down Ugh. and here's here's something that almost never happens we never walk into a restaurant and and me i go let's get the fuck out of here that <laughs> yeah. never happens like and and boy we got into and opened up those fucking sticky laminated men- menus and i was like this is like food from hell. And then also, my first real big red flag was when our waiter, who, hey, he thank good. God for him. He was awesome. God bless him. He was he was a saint. He was you know, hero's Attentive. work. But dear God, and poor thing, that's not the place to work. But he uh, he was like, hey, do you guys want to start out some water? Any drinks? Any bottled water? You know, bottled <laughs> water. And I'm staring at him, and he's staring at me, and I'm like. I feel like that's code for the tap water is disgusting. <laughs> and if you don't order the bottled water, I'm going to think he you're really, nasty. He did. I was like, I've never had it. He's just like, lady, bottled water. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. He did do that. And he just paused. And I'm like, uh, and then okay. The so water, we're all like, yeah, we'll take the bottled water. And then he delivered water. like two of those enormous, enormous like, like, um, you know, uh, shells. Like two story of, high. Like, Gun shell, like Crazy. cannon shell, cannon shell, smart water. I, I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, it was like t- bigger than the table. It was, they were huge. And I'm like, geez, okay, we've got water. This is how the water comes. And then we opened up the sticky, sticky uh, fucking, I can't even call, I don't even want to call it a menu, you know? Because that's like, it's not a menu. It's a, uh, God, what is it, guys? It was like. It's a it's a horror show. It was a horror show. It was that it menu, was almost like choosing I, between again, which shit. So so that was the thing. Which was is like, the least here's, here's what I thought. disgusting poop to eat. 
What is? Like if you, if literally, you know, it was like a menu of feces. Yeah. And then you had to choose within like, okay, it's going to be either diarrhea, a swirl or a banana. You know what I mean? Like it was disgusting. Everything was disgusting. And by the way, glazed. All of the shit no. was fucking glazed. Well, here's the thing. As Terminal A has not changed, so Fridays. Yeah has not changed it was like a men i was like it was a real flashback i'm like oh i felt like we'd stepped into like a a time machine i (laughs) felt like we went back in time when we stepped into that friday it was like like, the 90s or something right i was like yeah like like, you know in the 90s like (laughs) Uh everything was grimy and poorly lit and menus were full of foods that were just covered in glazes and some sort of form of like whiskey bourbon glaze and you know like fake fucking grill marks on this shit oh. all comes from Ooh. a bag kind of vibes yeah like i'm Shocking. like i hadn't i mean you guys wow. I, I tried Wait. to play it safe i ordered a caesar salad here's okay? the thing though. can i you <sighs> did you did but let me i just want to point this out yeah i'm walking all over what you're saying and i'm sorry oh, but walk I, away so it's texas um, walk on me Mess with me. Mess with me, baby. <laughs> Mess with me. Get your boots on me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I was I had a real flea instinct. I was like, and, the, and then you looked at me and you're like, we can't leave. Do you realize how hungry I am? And I was like, I was like, we gotta hang there because we need you need food as soon as possible. By walking out of there, it's gonna complicate it, and I don't want that. I don't want to be carrying that weight anymore. Mm. Because I here, anymore, I'll be, anymore. I'll be honest with you. Uh-huh. When you say you're hungry in the morning, you go like I'm hungry, <laughs> and then when you say it again, it becomes my responsibility. <laughs> it becomes, first time it's mine. It's like, the second time it's the your first responsibility. Time it's like, it's, oh, she's hungry. Well, it, you know. And then when you say it again, uh-huh. it's a, it's uh, whether you know it or not, it is very much you. Handing me the baton and going, <laughs> you must find me the food. hunger baton. You got, get me the like, fucking food. You're like, now. I am so hungry that I can't think clearly. Yes, you must lead me to a source of food <laughs> as soon as possible. And when we went into the Fridays, I, and I realized what we had walked into, and then I, and when I did make motions to leave, you were like, you. You squashed it. You looked yeah, at me like because I was crazy at that point. Were, I was like, my blood sugar was. Oh, you want to go somewhere? You want to go somewhere <laughs> else? You want to? You want? <laughs> do you realize how hungry I am? <laughs> so, but here's the funny thing. Tell everybody you're lucky. I've got a sense of humor, Mister. Someone <laughs> could get divorced over this conversation. Tell, tell everybody. <laughs> Go ahead and tell He it. kept saying I was hungry, <laughs> god damn it. Tell everybody I what you got. Blamed. Tell everybody what happened. I'm gonna let you fin- I'm gonna let you finish this. I've I've We're we're <laughs> Go ahead. Tell them. I got a Caesar salad and playing it safe. Yeah, I thought it was playing it safe and queso with chips. Because I thought, again, Texas? I don't know. God help me out, guys. It what happened, what was delivered to me, what was slid onto that table. Oh man, I you know what Fridays you should be ashamed of yourself in Dallas Love Airport Terminal A. I hope you hear this and you know what? Make some fucking changes. That was unacceptable. The salad I actually thought was going to poison me. I was like, I shouldn't eat this because I took a bite and it to say it tasted off would be such a <laughs> fucking understatement. So Fridays I see you. Listen, what Fridays happened was not go. right. I think it should actually go away. Burn to the ground and then something else just rises they need to do up like, like They like need to Phoenix do a real pivot. Just... They need to do some kind of like Arby's style pivot, mm-hmm. you know, something like that. But boy. Well, they got to have something redeemable. I mean, cheese guys. I, mean, I think at some point that's going to be the only remaining Fridays right there in, in Dallas Terminal A. Wow. Like they're just never, they can't it's let it gonna go. It's just going to be there forever. They can't let it go. I, the, there was a There's couple pro- that sat down behind us, and I, when I listened to them order burgers, I was at once horrified, and I almost laughed hysterically like a, like a maniac, because I was like, this is the most insane thing I've ever heard. They're ordering burgers as if it's a restaurant. Do you know what I mean? They're like, yeah, I'd like that, you know, maybe medium rare um, with like this, che-. I'm like, bitch, 
that's gonna you, you don't have a choice on how that burger is gonna be presented to you i mean the fact that you ordered be- could, beef could i have that you without, ordered beef from fridays can i have that without the hickory lacquer no <laughs> you can't because it's already fucking on it it comes with it it comes Guys, with it honey No, it's going to go in some weird burger press that has no distinction between rare meat. Why would you even think of that? You, you, I, I just, again, like I said, I was, I was. You don't think they grill the burgers? (laughs) You don't think they have any control over whether they're rare, (laughs) medium, or well done? If they do, I, I don't even want to know. I don't even need to go. I don't want to know either. I, I have, I. What did did you eat again? What'd you have? I had some shitty dumplings. Yeah, you were doing weird dissection with them where you were like trying to... I had a house salad and a piece of salmon. Salmon. And a replication of a piece of salmon. I know. It like came in a bowl that they microwaved clearly and just like slid it on the table to you. It was really intense, guys. I I used to really like my fake grill marks and my... Burger King burger. Yeah, when you were in your 20s, oh, no, when right? when I was a kid. I re- you know, oh. when I was a kid, I really liked that. Don't say, and in but your now, 20s, now drunk on fake, tour. fake grill marks make me feel a little crazy. Totally. But I have I have a really p- important, I forgot to tell you. What? Speaking of like chains of r- restaurants that make, you know, pretty much primarily unhealthy food. Yeah. Um, Friendly's. Yes. Is, is a local chain. Yeah. Actually, it, it goes as, I think it extends as far as Ohio, but it had its heyday. And mm. it's not, the restaurants themselves are not doing as well as they used to. The ice cream brand, I hope that goes on forever. I really do. Sure. But as far as the actual diner style restaurant that it's friendlies, although I loved it mm. when I was, you know, mm-hmm. 12, 13, 14, I, I did love it. And you get, they called their shakes fribbles. <laughs> which was like one of the coolest, one of the best parts about moving to Massachusetts was being Getting able a fribble. To, was being able to order a, a chocolate fribble. That was fucking great. So I'm, I'm starting to regret what I'm about to say, but the friendlies on 91 yeah. at our big s- stupid, I know. Not, not stupid. I mean, we have a, we have an amazingly big rotary that people can go really fast on and really hurt each other it's on. Stupid. <laughs> it's a, it's a perfect, I mean, it's one of my, the first well, 30, it's a big, the way people behave on it and, is quite stupid. It's really big. And people, and some people, people are still acclimating to, to the rotary technology, right? I don't know uh, what they're doing. They're taking it as an excuse to be a butthead though. I swear well, to it's, God. It's, it's a particularly wild rotary. It is. It's very big and you can gain, Unhinged. you can go really fast. They make mm-hmm. rotaries pretty small now because then you can't do as much damage when you hit somebody because you don't understand what a rotary is. Anyway, it's, it's shuttered. That friendly, it's completely shuttered. Yeah. And you know, I yeah. for one welcome our new Starbucks overlords. <laughs> I welcome it. I'm sorry. I know. It's controversial. I, know. I mean, we have we have a, a we have a lot of you know absolutely delightful small coffee shops in our town, and I wish them I wish them to continue thriving. Although I think the clientele there, very few of them are going to go to Starbucks. <laughs> okay. Well, that concludes <laughs> another raw impressions. Congratulations. Congratulations, Lou. <laughs> Thanks, Fort Track Man. We're making it back, making it back to the mic, Adele. Mm. You. 